and we go for a walk or we do a lot of exercise, anything like that, and it gets the body moving and blood flowing. So dress a little warmer if you're gonna be doing art. That being said, let's unpack. didn't take long at all and that was my very first time setting this up so I'm really excited about that. I want to draw your attention to a couple of different things. I have this green thing for water where I can wash out my brushes and then I have some reserved water that I can use to keep clean and actually dilute my different paints with. I'll be painting with gouache today. I started to play with that. It's somewhere in between watercolor and acrylic. That is the most accurate description I've heard of the medium. So far I really like it. It has a much more creamy base. It's not as op or it's not as translucent as watercolor. You can get it to be extremely opaque, which is what a a lot of people like about it but something else to note is that unlike acrylic which can dry really glossy same thing for some oils gouache dries very very matte and flat which as much as I like a little bit of sparkle and something I really enjoy that about gouache the fact that it just does that oh something else I like to have that I don't actually have with me today and I'm just not worth the effort going back and getting it are these little plastic eyedropper tools that I like to reuse I'll actually use those to grab clean water and add it to my paints just because I can measure it out a little bit better and also it keeps my brushes from getting too frayed with trying to put too much water in there and getting the water dirty and then you have to clean your brush I don't know it seems like a whole thing I really just like to drop clean water in there but I don't get to do that today there are different holders for the brushes. You can see I've got, yes, okay. I had to make sure you guys can actually see that. I have some up here on my easel. There's slots over here for brushes. And then I have a couple of flat brushes over here. The palette that I have today, this is a travel palette. You can see all the spaces where you could either make watercolor or gouache blocks kind of like the blocks that you can buy from the stores and just paint directly from those. I did bring my tubes with me today because I haven't used this yet. And also I like paint fresh from the tube. It's the only way you can get that like super creamy, I think opaque consistency. So while I will be putting them in these wells, I am gonna break out my tubes here in just a minute. And then this is all your space to be able to mix and do all the things. I think this is supposed to be a little thumb hole here you could hold on to it I probably won't I don't necessarily like to hold my palette and that's another thing this just slides this tabletop that I have here that hopefully you can see this just slides right onto my stand, whether it's tall or short. Since I'm sitting low to the ground, I considered putting it to the side and you could definitely do that, but I'm also good with extending my leg out. So I'm gonna have it in front of me for right now, just because I like that. You hopefully saw I was putting together a little seat. That's something to think about in your kit if you're going outdoors. Do you wanna have to stand the entire time or hope that there's a bench or somewhere to sit, which oftentimes I mean there can be, but it doesn't hurt to have a little stool in your pack. This added like no weight and it's pretty comfy. I'm actually decently <laughs> surprised. So the only other things I have to tell you guys about are the two different papers that I have. I packed a block of watercolor paper just to test for the weight, but I went ahead and put these guys on boards to be ready to go. So today I have both hot press and cold press, and we're gonna do something with 
both of them. I'll see if I knock out two paintings today. I'll either do both of them in this video or you'll have to tune in tomorrow to catch the second picture, maybe on my Facebook page and Instagram, which is where if you ever miss a video or feel like there's a video missing, I post the extra days on Facebook and Instagram both. So make sure that you tune in there to see what else I'm up to. And then of course you can see that I have my palette here and it does have a little lip on it so I can just set these down on there. There we go. And we're gonna start with the hot press and that's pretty much everything. Oh, I wanna tell you. Look at this coolness. This is another thing that I recently got. It was really cheap, which was nice. It was maybe five bucks, I wanna say. But it is a color mixing guide. So I'm trying to make sure that I actually understand my colors better. And that way you can get more out of all your different paints. So just like you do for most charts, you can look at the bottom and the side and it says that these are the dominant colors, so this is your main base color, and then these are your mixing colors. It's literally the same colors repeated this way and this way. It just depends on how much you want to add to achieve the desired effect. So if I pick this one, I know that I need ultramarine blue is my base, and I would have to mix it with, I'm gonna say this so wrong, Quincidone Red. Did I butcher that? I bet I butchered that. So. <laughs> I've got this handy little reference. It fit in my backpack. I was super excited. I'm gonna try really hard to do more color mixing and just achieve whatever. I'm looking around and we've got a lot of trees and dead leaves. I don't really know what I want to paint. Uh, spoilers, it's probably not gonna be a landscape. It's probably gonna be like some select trees and then just adding cool stuff around it. So no agenda, just getting out and doing the thing, right? That being said, let's paint. Mm -hmm. 